Hey, it's Yulia and let's talk school intakes. Many of you asked me many, many times, Yulia, what is the best intake to come to Canada? Should I start school in September or in January? If you're still not sure, then watch this video till the very end and you will learn how to pick the right intake for you and your needs. And let's start with the most popular option, fall intake. The fall intake is the most popular for obvious reasons, for years and years, we've been used to starting school either on September 1st or on the first week of September. And we also used to end in the school last week of May, beginning of June. So if you want to start your new program right after graduation, fall intake was made for you. Most of the programs will start in September, but for some programs, that is the only option available. I saw some nursing programs at my college and they will only start in September. That's the only intake they have. There are definitely more seats available for local students, for international students, more funding like scholarships and grants. But please bear in mind that a popular intake means a lot of other things. For example, more competition. In Canadian colleges and universities, seats are based on first come, first serve basis. If you don't meet the deadlines, you will be placed on the waiting list and who knows if it's gonna ever reopen. And it will only reopen if someone withdraws their application. So the chances are like, not really big, you know? A pro tip from me, apply for multiple programs. This way you will end up getting at least something. And if your first program of choice is waitlisted and you get accepted to your number two and three options, and then this space opens up, you can always withdraw this two and take your program of choice. Thank me later. Fall intake also means less jobs and less housing, because first of all, people who studied there before, they've taken all the jobs and housing. So second year students most likely have those jobs you were trying to apply for. Same with housing. Many students choose to stay on campus in the city during their summer break. So this way they find the best apartments, they rent them and there's nothing available for you. I'm sorry. And let's not forget about our favorite IRCC, Immigration Canada. Since fall intake is the most popular one, that means that the number of applications, huge number, my friend. What it means for you is that colleges and universities, they take a lot of time to issue those letters of acceptance, but then visa centers, processing centers, they spend more time issuing those study permits because the number of people applying is just crazy. It might take a while to get all your papers ready. If you're planning to start your school in September, you will need to have everything ready by the time you need to apply. The next intake is winter intake, and it's the second popular option for students, especially for the postgraduate students. It is popular among international students for one specific reason. If you missed the fall deadline, winter is four months apart from fall, so you can always apply for the next semester and come a bit later. So let's say your visa is delayed and you got it like in October, you can always transfer to winter intake and start your school a bit later. There are definitely less students, less competitions, but also less seats available. The amount of programs vary from college to college, from university to university. You should always check that online. And speaking of competition, I personally applied in November, got everything ready, and I was in class in January. So you understand, like, the difference between the student numbers in September and in January is just crazy. If you are a postgraduate student, hear me out. I was one of you guys at some point in my life. So if you're planning to study two one-year programs, January. January is your option because you start your program in January, you graduate mid-August, you start your second program, September. You have two weeks between the programs. Some people might be like, oh, but I'm gonna be so tired, I need a break. Listen, you're gonna finish two programs, two one-year programs in a year and a half. And the best part is, you're gonna get that three-year work permit because one academic program plus one academic program means 
three years. That's literally what I've done. That's literally what I always tell postgraduate students. I'm like, don't waste your time. Why would you like have this summer break? If you're planning to work, sure, that might be the case. You can work during the summer and then start your school in September. But if your goal is to, you know, study, 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 and then start working, start in January and you'll graduate next May. All right, Yulia, it sounds too good to be true. Well, there is one downside to it. It's winter, my friends. And Canadian winters? If you're not from a cold country, you will freeze. Trust me. So if you're coming from a warmer country, I will not recommend coming during winter because you will just want to pack your bags and then just go home, you know, like next week. It's going to be cold. But on the other side, I personally came to Canada beginning of January. The grass was green, but in two days, the snowfall happened and Ottawa was just like covered in snow. So pro tip here, think twice before moving to Canada in winter. And the next intake is spring intake. Some colleges and universities call it summer intake, but who cares? It starts in May. And this intake is the least popular one. Can you guess why? Share in the comments. Exactly, because there are much less programs available in spring intake. But you know what? I feel like that's a very underestimated intake for a few reasons. Listen, all the fall students, they finish school in May. They go home. You see what I'm saying? Apartments, free. Jobs, free. Companies are looking to fill in those positions for the summer. So, you can easily find a job if you go to Canada in spring. But one important thing, you can only work 20 hours per week when studying and you can start working only after you started your school. So yes, you can work, but it's only part-time, 20 hours a week, but this part-time job may lead you to a full-time job during your break. But also if let's say you stay with the same company for years, they might offer you something. For example, my friend, he was working part-time at Canadian Tire, then he got a full-time job, career promotion at its finest. Now, at this point of video, you might be wondering, but how do I pick the right one? How do I choose? Yulia, help me, SOS. Not to worry, my friend. I've prepared a list of questions you should be asking yourself, and then you will have your answer. First of all, what is your program of choice? What is your dream program? Then what are your programs number two and number three? What are the intakes available for those programs? Are these programs available throughout the year or it's just September or well, just January? Do you have everything you need to have? Your grades, your English exam, portfolio, if you need a portfolio, do you have everything like here? If not, when are you getting all these papers? Because I know when you graduate, you will need to wait for your like diploma so then you can apply. Do you have everything? If no, put the date, write it down, good. Are you meeting the deadline for your chosen program and intake? Can you submit the documents once the portal or whatever the platform opens? What are the processing times for study permits in your country? If the processing times are high, you might consider another intake. Is there any financial aid available? And if so, what are the deadlines for that? How is the housing situation in the chosen city during the chosen period of time? How are the jobs? Answering these questions will help you understand which intake works better for you. And if you already chosen your program, your intake, your city, you call everything, don't forget to watch my video about first week in Canada because I know you guys are moving to Canada very soon. First week in Canada will be very helpful and I wish you all the best in your Canadian adventures and I'll see you next week. Bye!